Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today for a special presentation of Developer Center. What's that? Let's start with an overview. If there's anything you ever wanted to know about using Pure Cloud's platform API, webhooks, web chat, or data dip connectors, the Developer Center is right where you want to be. We have code first tutorials, open source projects, and we even have API documentation and technical articles, if you're into that sort of thing. But if you can't find what you're looking for, visit the forum to interact with other Pure Cloud developers and even get questions answered by Interactive's developers that are writing and consuming our own APIs. All right, let's get started with a walkthrough of the website. First up is the API documentation. Got to get the fun stuff out of the way first, right? There are four primary APIs in Pure Cloud. The first one is the platform API. It's the REST web service that all of the Pure Cloud UIs are built on, so more likely than not, if you've seen something in the UI and thought, hey, I'd like to build that myself, the platform API will be your weapon of choice. We also have an API spec for building data dip web services that can be called from architect call flows. Now this one's pretty cool. They allow you to proxy data dip requests from the IVR in the cloud to back in databases and services on your local network. Next up are webhooks. If you have any use cases where you want an external system to be able to contact you in real time, look no further. Our webhooks allow you to send markdown formatted chat messages to any group in Pure Cloud. Finally, we have web chat. If you plan to have customers chatting into your agents, this section has everything you need to get started embedding chat UI into your own web page. All right, let's dig a little deeper and take a look at the platform API docs. Now I'll be honest, there's a lot of information here and it can be pretty overwhelming at first, but let me break it down for you. The first big thing to tackle as a new developer is authorization. PureCloud uses OAuth2 to authenticate users. If you're not familiar with the spec, it allows applications to direct the user to the PureCloud login screen to authenticate, and then PureCloud lets the application know that the user was successfully authenticated. The Dev Center has related resources for each OAuth grant type, as well as several articles for more in-depth authentication topics. Once you've mastered the art of OAuth, the next resource you'll probably use is the API resource documentation. These docs provide the actual technical documentation for every resource in the platform API. This is by far the largest portion of the site, but let's take a look at the most common resource, get API v2 users me. To find this resource, we'll look in the users category and then click on the, on the resource to expand it. Right away, you'll see the input parameters and definitions for all of the responses that you'll get from the service. If you click on the usage header, it will expand a section showing code snippets for how to use that resource, not only with curl, but with all of our SDKs. Each response code can be expanded to see the schema for the object it will return. On the left is a sample JSON object so that you can easily see the schema. On the right is the documentation for the schema. It describes each parameter and gives you everything you need to know about it. Many of the platform API categories have related resources that go with them. There are articles written by real live humans to provide additional context for the API resources. They most often walk you through processes that require more than one API call or provide context to help you understand when and why you might use certain resources. A good example of related resources can be found in the analytics category. The analytics resources require complex queries to be constructed to allow you to get the data you're looking for. There are notes describing the various kinds of analytics query resources and documentation on how to build queries to use with each resource. There's quite a few additional pages under the platform API that contain useful information. Let's take a quick look at some of those. First up is the API Tips and Tricks page. This contains lots of useful information, just general stuff about the API that you might like to know as a user of the API. Next up is a statement about the platform API versioning, just some stuff that you might like to know about how it gets versioned and incremented. We also have a troubleshooting page that walks through several things that you can use to help troubleshoot any problems you're having with the API. And finally, uh, we have a page about Postman that gives you information on how to configure Postman and automated uh, packages that you can download and import into Postman to get all of the API calls. 
Uh, down at the end, we even have a walkthrough video to walk through you through setting up Postman so that you can make these API calls. Uh, using Postman to do this is a really great tool to set up and configure your API calls so that you can test them outside of the context of your application. Next up is webhooks. This is only one page, but that's because it really is that easy. The chat webhooks are a great workflow feature that we use heavily in our own org. My favorite one that I have configured is for me to get real-time notifications whenever a build completes. It's really useful because I've configured the message to contain some details about the result of a build. For example, it sends me a full change log for what's in the build and tells me if the build was successful or not. It even has a link directly to the build web page, so all I have to do is click it and it opens up for me. Last up is web chat. The documentation page covers how to embed the chat window in your own website. It continues on to cover all the configuration and customization options available. It even has a full code example at the end and a demo page that you can use to test out chat with your own org. You can just simply click the try it now button and it loads up the chat with us demo page and you can fill out information that you'd like to use for the customer, as well as settings for your own org. You can use the autofill details button to log into your org and automatically populate your org name, org ID, and queue name. So I'm sure you've been thinking to yourself, REST web services are great, but is there an easier way to use the platform API? Yes, there is. We have a collection of software development kits available in several popular languages. We currently support JavaScript, Java, .NET, Ruby, and Python. Support for iOS, Android, and PHP will be coming soon. The SDKs provide language-specific classes and constructs to easily interface with the platform API. It handles all the heavy lifting for you by encapsulating 100% of the HTTP transport handling. This means all you have to do is invoke the methods or functions in the SDK, and you will get a strongly typed response object to using your code. Documentation for each of the SDKs can be found on the Dev Center. The source code for each of the SDKs is published on GitHub for every build. That includes the compiled libraries as well as the raw source files for the SDK. So if you'd like to compile it yourself and add your own helpers to a SDK or roll it into a library that you already have, go ahead and knock yourself out. Let's dig into the SDK documentation a little. The documentation is arranged in a similar manner to the REST documentation. The SDKs are grouped into API classes that are the same as the categories for the REST APIs. Each API contains methods to match each REST resource in the category and are named based on the resource path. Let's take a look at the most common resource, get API v2 users me. To find this in the SDK, we should start looking for the users category. The method names consist of the HTTP verb and the resource path after the category, so get API v2 users me can be found in the method get me. The documentation for each method includes the description, example code showing you how to use it, documentation of the input parameters, and a reference to the model type that the method returns. The methods have parameters based on the path, query string, and body parameters of the REST request. The get API v2 users me only has a query string parameter named expand, so there is only one method parameter that is also named expand. The return type is a user me object, which is a class that is the de deserialized JSON body returned by the REST service. The open source index is a listing of open source projects related to PureCloud. The listing allows you to filter the projects by categories and tags assigned to the repositories. The index contains projects created by Interactive Intelligence as well as projects created by third-party developers. If you have a project you'd like to submit to the index, follow the instructions on the Get Your Project Listed Here page. All you have to do is place a JSON file in your repo with the necessary information and then submit your project for review. The Developer Center has a section for Code First Tutorials. The tutorials cover concepts found in PureCloud and offer them in several languages. All of the tutorials are open source on GitHub, and we gladly accept pull requests for new tutorials as well as updates to existing tutorials for fixes or adding new languages. Let's take a look at one. You can look through the OAuth implicit grant login flow. 
On the left, we have a set of instructions that explain what we're doing. Up at the top, you can choose your language. This particular one is available in JavaScript, C Sharp, Ruby, and Python. To walk through the tutorial, simply hit the Next button to go to the next stage. On the left, it will describe that stage, and on the right, the code in question will be highlighted. Clicking the Next button continues on to highlight additional code and provide additional instructions. The developer forum is a great place to ask questions or have discussions about anything related to pure cloud development. The forum is powered by Discourse, which may look familiar if you visited communities for Imager, Atom Text Editor, Soylent, Ember, and many others. The forum is arranged into categories for the pure cloud APIs with subcategories for each SDK. The general idea is pretty simple. Create a new topic with your question and discuss it with the community members. The forum was created to engage customers, partners, system integrators, and even Interactive Intelligence's own employees in a collaborative environment for discussing the use of the PureCloud APIs.